Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be learning about geometric series. More specifically, we're going to be learning about the formula for calculating the nth term of a geometric series and we'll be seeing how to use it with some examples. And I'll say right away that another way of saying all of that is to say that we're going to learn how to calculate the sum of the first n terms of a geometric sequence. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll start by actually stating the formula. Given a geometric sequence, we can calculate the nth term of its geometric series with the formula s sub n, which means the sum of the first n terms, which is equal to the first term of the sequence, so u sub 1, times in parentheses the common ratio r raised to the power n, and we take 1 away from all of that, we close the parentheses, and all of that's divided by r minus 1. And let me say right away that we can also write this formula as s sub n, which is equal to the first term, u sub 1, times in parentheses, 1 minus r raised to the power of n, and all of that's written over 1 minus r. And so I could in fact write a little or in between those two. There we go. Now let me say right away that regardless of which of these two formula we use, we'll get the same result in the end. In other words, both of these formula are in fact equal, so it really doesn't matter which of the two you end up choosing. The next thing I'll say about these formula is that they will only work provided the common ratio isn't equal to 1. And to convince you of that, well, if the common ratio were equal to 1, we can see that the denominators we have here would equal to 0, which simply isn't mathematically possible. Now we'll see how to use this formula in just a minute, for the moment I'll go ahead and box it, and I'll also say that if ever you are an IB mathematics student, then you'll see this formula in your formula booklet. But I will go ahead and say that whether or not you're an IB mathematics student with a formula booklet or not, when studying geometric sequences, this formula really is something you should know. Now in just a minute or two, we're going to be working through two worked examples showing exactly how we can use these formula for calculating the sum of the first n terms of a geometric sequence. But before doing so, I feel it's quite important to spend a minute or so to really make sure that we understand what is meant when we speak of a geometric series and how that's actually connected to the sum of the first n terms of a geometric sequence. So for that, let me just come up with a very generic geometric sequence. Let's see, I could come up with this one. I could say the geometric sequence with first term 2, followed by 6, followed by 18, followed by 54, followed by 162, and of course I could carry on forever this way. Now looking at this sequence, hopefully we can all agree it's a geometric sequence. Indeed, to get from one term to the next, we're always multiplying by the same amount, that amount being 3. In fact, I'll write that underneath here, I'm multiplying by 3, multiplying by 3, multiplying by 3, and multiplying by 3 again. So this is a geometric sequence whose first term is u sub 1 and it's equal to 2, and whose common ratio is r, of course, and r is equal to 3. So I'll just write that as well, r is equal to 3. And I'll go ahead and box that, there we go. Okay, now, to understand what a series is, it's very important to understand that our starting point is always going to be a sequence, like this one. And so, given a geometric sequence, we can construct or make a geometric series. And here's the whole idea. A geometric series is just another sequence of numbers. And its first term is equal to the first term of the geometric sequence, so in this case, 2. And so what I'll do here is I'll write underneath this, the series that goes with the sequence we wrote above starts with 2. The second term of the geometric series, though, is equal to the sum of the first two terms of the geometric sequence. So that's 2 plus 6. And 2 plus 6, of course, is 8. I carry on. The third term of the geometric series, well, it's equal to the sum of the first three terms of the geometric sequence. So that's 2 plus 6 plus 18. Now, as we've just seen, 2 plus 6 is 8, so plus 18, that's 26. So the third term of the geometric series is 26. 
I carry on this way, the fourth term of the geometric series is equal to the sum of the first four terms of the geometric sequence. So 2 plus 6 plus 18 plus 54, which you can go ahead and check is equal to 80. And next, the fifth term of the geometric series is equal to the sum of the first five terms of the geometric sequence. So that's 2 plus 6 plus 18 plus 54 plus 162, which will be 242. And technically, we could go on forever this way. But so here's the whole idea. Given a geometric sequence like this one, its corresponding geometric series is another sequence of numbers in which each term is equal to the sum of the first corresponding terms in the sequence. So for instance, the third term of the series equals to the sum of the first three terms of the sequence. The fifth term of the series is equal to the sum of the first five terms of the sequence. And we could carry on that way. The twentieth term of the series would equal to the sum of the first twenty terms of the sequence. And to highlight the fact that this sequence of numbers is in fact a series which was built using a sequence like the one we had here, each of its terms is referred to using the letter S with a subscript. So the first term of the series would be S sub 1, the second term would be S sub 2, the third term S sub 3, and so on and so forth. And so with this formula here, when we speak of calculating the sum of the first n terms of a geometric sequence, another way of saying that is that we're looking at the formula for the nth term of the geometric series. And so, for example, whether we say we need to find the fifth term of the geometric series, or whether we say we need to calculate the sum of the first five terms of the geometric sequence, makes no difference whatsoever. The formula we would use is exactly the same. And in fact, if you feel up for it, go ahead and use either one of these two formula to calculate the sum of the first five terms of this sequence, and you should find that it's equal to 242. But I'll leave that to you, and for the rest of this video, let's go ahead and work through two examples. So let me just add those to our page here. There we go. So here we have two examples, and in each of these examples, we're given the first few terms of a geometric sequence. And so let's start with example one here. And so let's say we're asked to calculate the sum of the first 12 terms of this sequence. Which remember, we could also say we need to find the 12th term of its geometric series. And so I'll simply write underneath here, we need to find S sub 12. And I'll write a little equals to question mark. Okay, well, let's see. I'll go ahead and write S O L here for solution. Now, looking at this sequence of numbers, as well as the formula we have over here, we quickly realize that what we need to make a note of is the first term of the sequence, so U sub 1, as well as its common ratio. Indeed, regardless of these two formula we use, those are the only two things we need to actually use it. So let's see, looking at our sequence here, we can see that as we go from one term to the next, we're always multiplying by the same amount. And that amount in this case is again three. So the common ratio R is equal to three. And I like to go ahead and box that like so. Now, if ever you have trouble in seeing that that's three, don't hesitate to use your calculator and to divide the second term by the first term, or even the third term by the second term, or the fourth term by the third term, and all three of those options would lead to the same result, that being the common ratio R, which is equal to three. And in fact, maybe I'll write that on the side here, the common ratio R is equal to the second term, 15.3, divided by the first term, 5.1, and by all means use your calculator if needs be, but you'll find that the common ratio is equal to three, which is what we wrote over here. Next, as I said previously, we also make a note of this sequence's first term. And so the first term is right here, that's 5.1, so I'll just write u sub one is equal to 5.1. And as such, we're now ready to use this formula. Now, as I said, it really doesn't matter which of these two formula we end up using. They'll both lead to the same result. But I will say that as a rule of thumb, we'll use the first formula we see here, in which the R appears first on the numerator and the denominator, as soon as the common ratio R is greater than one. For all other options, we'll use the second formula. 
But so maybe I'll add that in gray here. Let's see, I'll just say right here, I'll sort of box that here, and I'll say that we'll use that one as soon as the common ratio R is greater than one. And again, it really doesn't matter which of these two formula we use, but the reason why we set this sort of mini rule is to try and avoid having anything negative on the denominator. So since in this case, our common ratio is equal to three, which is greater than one, I'll go ahead and calculate the sum of the first 12 terms using the first formula we see here. And so let's see, copying this formula, but replacing the n we see here by 12, it becomes s sub 12, the sum of the first 12 terms, is equal to the first term, u sub one, times in parentheses r, that's the common ratio, raised to the power of 12, I take one away from that, and I divide all of that by r minus one. Now, replacing the first term u sub one by 5.1, and the common ratio that I see on the numerator and the denominator by the value we have here, which is three, this becomes 5.1 times in parentheses, three raised to the power of 12, I take one away from that, and all of that's written over three minus one. And now that that's done, I can turn over to my calculator, and you can see mine on the screen here, and I'll go ahead and type all of this. And careful, although I don't write parentheses here, I'll go ahead and write the entire numerator in between a pair of parentheses, and I'll also type the denominator inside a pair of parentheses. So let's see, I'll have in parentheses, 5.1 times in parentheses, three raised to the power of 12, so that's three raised to the power of 12. I take one away from that, I exit that first pair of parentheses and I divide that entire numerator by another pair of parentheses inside of which I type my denominator, which is three minus one. Now, of course you could argue that's two, I don't need to write that calculation, but I'll do so here just to showcase the fact that if we're using a calculator, we really don't have to think about anything, we just key it all in there and there we go. Once I'm happy with everything I typed, I go ahead and click on enter and we're done. We can see here on the calculator that the sum of the first 12 terms of this geometric sequence, which I could also call the 12th term of this geometric series, is S sub 12, which is equal to 1,355,172. And I'll go ahead and box that result. There we go. And that's how we can calculate the sum of the first 12 terms of this geometric sequence. Now that's done, let's go on to the next example, example two. Now in this second example, again, we're given a geometric sequence, and let's say that we're asked to find the sum of the first 20 terms. And so I'll go ahead and write, let's say we need to find S sub 20. So I'll write S sub 20 equals to question mark. And again, as I always do, I'll go ahead and write S-O-L here for solution. Okay, just as for the first example, it's clear we're gonna be using the formula that we see here. And again, the only thing we need to make a note of to use these formula are the sequence's first term as well as its common ratio. Remember, all we see on the right-hand side of these formula are the first term and the common ratio R. Well, for the first term, there's no real problem, right? That's the term we have here. So the first term of this geometric sequence is u sub one, which is equal to 192. For the common ratio, on the other hand, well, we need to figure out what we would multiply each of these terms by to get to the next term. And in this case, it's a little less obvious. But again, we can go ahead and find the common ratio r by dividing any term we have by the previous term. So we could say that the common ratio r is equal to 144 divided by 192 or even 108 divided by 144, or even 81 divided by 108. It doesn't matter which of those options you choose, they will all lead to the same answer. And so to quickly figure out what the common ratio R is with my calculator, I'll go ahead and say that R is equal to the second term, so U sub two divided by the first term, U sub one. So in this case, that's 144, the second term, divided by the first term, 192. And so if I quickly write that out, that's 144 divided by 192. And so if I quickly move over to my calculator here, which you can see on the screen, that will be 144 divided by 192, 
which is equal to 0 0.75. And I'll write that here, r is equal to 0 0.75. There we go. And so for the sake of illustrating that, I'm multiplying by 0 0.75, by 0 0.75, and by 0 0.75 again. So r equals to 0 0.75. There we go. Okay, now that we know the first term, as well as the common ratio, we're ready to use our formula for calculating the sum of the first n terms of a geometric sequence. And so to calculate the sum of the first 20 terms, so s sub 20, we can use either one of these two formula, but here since the common ratio r is equal to 0 0.75, well, we'll go ahead and use the second formula we have here. Remember, we tend to only use the first one if the common ratio r is greater than 1. So we use the second one. And so copying this formula but replacing the ends we see here by 20, it quickly becomes the first term times in parentheses 1 minus r raised to the power of 20 over 1 minus r. Now replacing the first term by 192 and the two r's that we see here by 0 0.75, we can state that the sum of the first 20 terms is equal to 192 times in parentheses 1 minus 0 0.75 raised to the power of 20, close parentheses, and all of that's divided by 1 minus 0 0.75. I now turn back to my calculator, which you can see on the screen here, and I go ahead and type this entire numerator inside a pair of parentheses. So that would be 192 times in parentheses 1 minus 0 0.75 raised to the power of 20. That's 20. There we go. I exit all of that, and I now divide that by the denominator, which again I write inside a pair of parentheses. So that's 1 minus 0 0.75. I exit the parentheses, I check everything I've just typed, and I'm happy with what I see, and so I click on Enter. And we're done. The sum of the first 20 terms of this geometric sequence, which we could also call the 20th term of the geometric series, is equal to 765.56451. And if you're an IB mathematics student, you should be rounding that answer to three significant figures to state your final answer as the sum of the first 20 terms of this geometric sequence is equal to 766. And that's the final answer. And there we go. Now again, it really doesn't matter which of these two formula you use. In fact, it could be a good idea to convince yourselves of that fact by doing this first example again, but doing it using the second formula, and you should find the same result. And also by doing the second example we have here, but this time do so using the first formula. And again, you should get the same result. So put simply, doesn't matter which one you choose, you really can't go wrong. All that being said, that's it for this video on geometric series and calculating the sum of the first n terms of a geometric sequence. And if ever that helped, please hit like on this video, drop a comment down below, and even subscribe to this channel to help get this video to as many students out there as possible. All that being said and done, that's it for this tutorial.